In this video, we are looking at Mealy. Mealy is a self-hosted meal planner, shopping list, cookbook service that you can run using Docker. I'm going to walk you through the entire process and showcase its use cases and why you might want to self-host this yourself. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. As I just mentioned, in this video, we will be looking at Mealy, which is a self-hosted cookbook, meal planner sort of thing where you can you know, add shopping lists. Also, if you find like a good recipe online, you can actually just put in the URL, paste it into Mealy, and Mealy will write up all the steps and everything that you need. You can add it to a shopping list. It's just a great thing to have as part of like your everyday services that you will use at home. So I'm gonna take you through Mealy. We'll just have a quick look at their demo app. Then I'll walk you through the process of deploying it with Docker, more specifically Docker Compose. Before we get started, I just wanted to say, if you could subscribe, that'd be fantastic. We are so close to 10,000. And also a massive shout out to my youtube members you guys are awesome uh if you're keen to join in the discussion if you get stuck or anything like that and you need help jump into the discord a link is in the description all the documentation for my docs and the official docs will also be in the description as well let's get into it so merely what is it so as you can see here on the front page it's just like all your recipes so for example if we just click into one it's great it gives you left side all the ingredients and the instructions on the right my wife is going to love this so i'm looking forward to getting this set up and also again if you're just you do a lot of cooking at home and you'd like to have something then this is pretty much perfect so i think a good place to start is let's just go through the left hand side here so we've got the meal planner as you can see here you can plan out your meals for the week and you can actually make sure you've got all everything you need you've got the shopping list so for example, if we go to meal planner, now the great thing with having a meal planner and the shopping list and the cookbooks all in one thing, let's say for our meal planner here, we have the meatballs here, right? The great thing is what we can do is on the right hand side here, we've got the three dots. You can actually go add to list, right? And then you can say you can add it to your grocery list and all of these will get added to your list. It's all inbuilt. So you go, cool. We add that to our list. You can come to the shopping list look for that grocery list, and then everything that you need has been added there. Now this is a demo page, so it's public. So that's why you see a lot of things here. A link to the demo will be in the description as well if you're keen to check it out. Now I just showed you the shopping list so we can add those as you need. Now we've got a timeline here as well, so if you can see you know, what recipes are being made and what people are doing. We've got the cookbooks here, so if you wanted to, maybe you have specific cookbooks or maybe specific people. Now the main thing I really like is if you click create here and then you can go import, you can actually import online recipes into here because that's the one thing I actually like because sometimes when people put recipes on their web page, it's hard to follow. So let's for example, look up a recipe. Uh, so this one here. Now we'll just scroll down and see if they have, you know, like a recipe because this is the problem with a lot of like recipe pages is they have a lot of like random ads and a lot of talking. I just want to know the steps and here it is here. Cool. So we'll copy this URL. We'll come to Mealy, we'll paste that in the recipe URL, and we'll hit create. And there we go. We have all the ingredients on the left hand side, and it's got all the steps that we need here. Right? So it breaks it all out because it's already been documented on that web page, but they've got so much stuff on that web page. Bring it straight into Mealy, and Mealy will handle it for you. So that's an overview. I think you pretty much get the concept. So let's look at how we can actually deploy this using Docker Compose. Right, so this is my Tech Docs Docs. This is my documentation website. So a link to this will be in the description, like I mentioned, and also the official documentation as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down and grab the Compose file. I'm going to copy this. And we're going to head over to our server. So this here is my sandbox server. It's just where I do a bit of testing. So what I normally do is I have a folder called Docker. And then in here are all the folders that hold my Docker Compose files and anything to do with that container. So we'll make a new one and we'll call this uh, Mealy. And we'll change into Mealy. And what we need to do is we need to do a nano docker compose.yaml. So we'll paste in that compose here and let's just have a quick look at what we're doing. So we will access Mealy on port 9925. And we're also putting a bit of a limit on this container to one gig of memory, so it's not going to chew up any more than that. The volume, so we're not going to use any bind mounts or anything like that. Everything's going to live in our merely hyphen data volume. So we'll create that in a second. And now there's a couple environment variables. So if you want people like, if, if you're only going to expose this to your home network and you want other people to sign up, then you can allow the sign up true. So this means other people can sign up. Now we're setting some permissions here. So PUID and PGID. Now these are the IDs of your user that's going to be deploying the container. By default, if you haven't made any other users, it should be 1000, but just double check that. If you have any questions or get stuck, YouTube comments or Discord, I'm more than happy to help. We need to change the time zone here. Right, so we can leave max workers and web concurrency as they are. 
Now the base URL, so this really depends on how you are going to expose this. So if it's just going to be internal, then you can just have a IP address here, or if you're going to use something like traffic or Nginx uh, proxy manager, then you could put a full domain name in here. Since this is a sandbox environment, I'm just going to have this running on its IP address. There we go. So that's just the IP address of my server. And there's the volume there. So it's just going to say, hey, look, this is the volume that we're going to use for this container. So we can save that and that will write and I can close out of there. So now if we just do an LS, we can see we have that Docker compose file. Now coming to my documentation, we can see that we need to also create that volume. So we can copy that command, jump to our server, paste that in and hit enter. And now we have our volume as well. So if you got into this point, then it, all of the Docker compose setup and everything like that is ready to go. So now we can just do a Docker compose up hyphen D and hit enter. And this is going to grab everything we have in that compose file, use those instructions and deploy our container. So while it's deploying, just looking at the instructions, you can see here that we are going to access it on 9925. And depending on what URL we put, we're going to access it via the domain name or just the IP address. And in this case, it will just be the IP address. So that took about a couple of minutes, so that's fine. So now we have our Docker container up and running. We can actually check this. We'll just do a Docker compose logs hyphen F. See how it's going. Cool. We can see that it's all running now. Right. So I can put that IP address in now uh, of the server and the port of Merely and hit enter. And hopefully we hit the container. And there we go. So it looks like this is your first time logging in. The username has changed me at example.com and the password is my password. Great. So let's just copy that. And it's saying here, it's going to keep giving you that warning unless you change those uh, details. So make sure to change those default details. And we can now hit log in. There we go. So welcome to Merely. Let's get started. And now we can set up some details. There we go. You can also see here there's enable advanced content. So it says enable advanced features like recipe scaling, API keys, web hooks, and all that. So if you're wanting those sort of features, you can enable it here now. But it says here that even if you don't enable or if you do enable it, you can always change the setting later. So we can see under group settings here, we've got the enable public access. So this is where you can allow people to not even have accounts and they can actually see recipes if you want that you've made public. Uh, so, you know, if you're using this on a home network, you genuinely don't need everyone to log in. So maybe this is a good approach. And you've got data management. So you see data. So merely ships with a collection of food units and labels that can be used to populate your group and helpful data. So it will give you some base labels and stuff that you can use. So generally these are pretty good. So we'll hit next. And we'll just have a quick look and all of this looks fine. So we can hit submit. Right, so this is all done. So now we can see that if we had a backup of merely, we could restore it here. So that's how that would work. Now, if you're coming from another sort of application, you can actually bring in your recipes to Merely. And now we can just start creating recipes and managing users and stuff like that. And now we have a blank slate for all of our recipes, uh, a meal planner, our shopping list, and then the timeline of anything that gets updated within Merely and any cookbooks that we want. So we would want to create one as well. Now, I've already gone through all of this, but a key thing to look at is the settings here. So this will give you a good overview of your configuration. So we can see here that it's not a secure site. When I actually deploy this, I'll probably use uh, Nginx Proxy Manager. So it will have a full domain name. So that's how I'll follow that. If you're just running it locally, I wouldn't be too worried. But it's always good to follow best practice. So if you can do this, then I would recommend to do it. A great thing about this is that it does support LDAP and OIDC um, authentication. So if you had something like Authentic or your own identity provider, Merely supports this and you can plug it in, which is fantastic. And I love using that. So I'm probably going to look at configuring my identity provider with Merely. So that's Merely. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's awesome to cover. I feel like I haven't really covered um, self-hosting content like this in a while. <laughs> I've been very focused on the, you know, tools to add to your self-hosting network, but not so much just covering self-hosted services. So it's quite fun just to come back to doing this. So that's Merely. All the instructions and all the documentation and all of that is in the description. Make sure to check it out. If you have any questions, YouTube comments or the uh, Discord, Link is in the description. More than happy to help you out. Again, thank you so much to everyone for subscribing uh, and also our YouTube members. Thank you so much for the support. It's awesome. If you're keen on joining and becoming a YouTube member, you'll get one-on-one -on -one support with me in the Discord if you need it. Otherwise, it's just a great way to support the channel. Uh, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great one. Goodbye.